Wikibon practitioners tell us that 85% of their IT spend is very often non-differentiated. So CIOs are under tremendous pressure with the large megatrends of cloud, mobile, social, and big data to transform their businesses. So how are organizations changing? What effects is the cloud having on organizations? And how are companies responding to that? And what's the industry doing to respond? Arun Darbal is here, he's with CSC. We're going to have a conversation around these factors and other trends in the industry. Arun, welcome to theCUBE, thanks for coming Thank on. you, thank you for having me. So when we have these CUBE conversations, we like to bring in uh, uh, technology experts, practitioners like yourself, business technology folks, to really talk about how organizations are transforming. So I want to start with what you're seeing with the big drivers. We've, we talked about um, the cloudification, the SaaSification of business. Uh, we're we're going to talk more about engineered systems. What do you see when you go around talking to customers as the big drivers of their business? Uh, there are a few that are going on. One is obviously the cloud and the, the emergence of the cloud. And uh, that in itself is a big topic. And, the, and then mobility essentially taking over the technology world and the business world. And then the third one that I'm seeing a significant shift in is cybersecurity and cyber and uh, the, all the security considerations that the companies are having. And, uh, and the, the, the two other things is essentially in terms of uh, uh, apps, applications modernization, uh, which is becoming a growing, and a growing trend and a growing market in terms of as companies shift from their legacy applications into this modern world of cloud and uh, mobile and uh, Last year at Oracle Open World, Mark Hurd said that uh, the average age of the enterprise app is 19 years. So these application portfolios in your customer base are, are very complex, very diverse. How are they moving to modernize and, and what's, what's happening to accelerate that move? So th there are two or three things that we are saying. Okay, one is, well, n number one, the, the entire budgetary considerations within the enterprise around IT and the IT spend is shrinking. And number two, it's like, 80, as, you, as you said, 85% of their current budget is being uh, spent towards the support and maintenance. And now the, the issue has become more of a business innovation and in catching up with business innovation. Are the systems able to keep up with the business innovation and the pace of innovation, uh, if you will? Uh, so now what is happening in the industries as we see it? Uh, and, uh, number one, uh, 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 the, a lot of the companies are actually doing, uh, getting into a transformation approaches uh, that we have never seen before, where they're basically moving lock, stock, and barrel uh, a lot of their business innovation and business out to outside the enterprise versus within their own walls. Mm -hmm. So what we are seeing is more of a hybrid approach uh, to the cloudification, where you're looking at, uh, uh, you know, uh, people basically running uh, all their applications internally, externally, hybrid clouds, service clouds, and vendor clouds, and, uh, and uh, as several of these uh, clouds, the, the, what we term as a service-enabled enterprise, if you will, innovation outside in, and essentially being managed and distributed from a central location across the hybrid clouds. So the services enabled, enabled enterprise is, a, is it's, it's sort of the externalization of, of services. It's, it's, a, it's not an insulated view of the world. Talk a little bit more about that. Let's unpack so, that. So what it is, is we are talking about, when we talk about business innovation and the IT innovation to catch up, we are unable to do that with the legacy applications that have been stitched together over, over many number of years. And that causes an alignment problem. And that, ca that causes a strategic years. alignment right. problem between the business and IT. Mm -hmm. And as these two merge, as IT and business merge, and performance, business performance being the singular driver uh, within a company, uh, what is happening is we are now looking at bringing applications and innovations external to the company, either essentially running it outside the company or within the walls of the company, or a hybrid mix of both uh, kind of internal and external innovation driving towards performance. So this creates a brand new issue uh, in terms of the ecosystem 
uh, how do we now manage? We, we had perfected, our IT had perfected the complete art of managing it internally, uh, on-premise systems and on-premise uh, uh, applications and such. But now in a hybrid environment, in a hybrid cloud environment, where the ven there's the vendor cloud, uh, there's your public cloud, there's your private cloud, <laughs> there's your <laughs> you know, on-premise application. How do you manage these things? How do you distribute the applications? And how do you pull not only the management, the distribution, but how do you basically ultimately get to a concept of an application store that is business related, business driven, and singularly business focused? So you're seeing a lot of organizations try to sort of replicate the capabilities of let's say the public cloud within their own on-premise infrastructure. Um, many uh, have been on that uh, journey for some time, uh, you're certainly seeing the, from a hardware standpoint, the, the convergence of compute and, and storage and, and, and networking. Um, you're also seeing uh, organizations try to integrate the stack in, into that approach. How does that affect value and how does that affect that alignment discussion that we were just having? So, as we get into that discussion, I think, as you see the curves and the adoption curves in the cost, the cost versus adoption or the cost versus risk models, uh, with the advent of the cloud, the uh, infrastructure costs have significantly come down or ramping down. And as you see the software, the enterprise software maturing, businesses are able to adapt to the software much better and much quicker than they have ever been able to adapt, which essentially allows them to basically come up with the concept of an application store where, where essentially we, uh, clients can go in and, uh, and uh, essentially provision an application of sorts. So App store. It, app store, <laughs> right. a, a true <laughs> app store, an enterprise app mm -hmm. store uh, versus uh, any kind of a mobile uh, store. Uh, it, this is an enterprise app store mm -hmm. uh, as the software advances. And now the question really then becomes is how do we integrate the entire stack and how do we basically provide the value while de-risking any kind of a business imperatives? So the more I build up, ground up from, a, from an infrastructure, uh, compute and storage, uh, and, uh, and essentially any kind of the databases and, uh, and the data, pers data storage and databases and data perspectives, and then basically bring in the enterprise applications, uh, all of a sudden you're, what, not, what you're now seeing is a stack that previously had to be integrated, now now is already integrated, and it's almost available to you in a box that can be provisioned, just like you're provisioning any kind of a mobile application. So, so this concept is becoming a reality, and this concept is becoming a part of any kind of a major business transformation that companies are undertaking. These days. So a CIO said to me the other day, I'm a CIO, I don't want to be the chief integration officer, I want to be the chief information officer. Now of course a lot of CSE's business has been integration mm -hmm. um, and, and now you're working an example with, with, with Oracle where uh, a lot of that integration is, is what Oracle calls pre-engineered. So what does that do for CSC and CSC's business? How do you transform as an organization? So Oracle has the entire kind of, Basically, I think Oracle has a, a pretty good name in the marketplace around the, the concept of engineered systems, mm -hmm. where the integrated, uh, you know, uh, compute and storage and and uh, uh, some of the some of the other basic uh, storage software and, and such. And these are high performance machines, and uh, and uh, we can talk about it in a, mo in a moment mm -hmm. about some of the examples where we're using. And now the advancement is around how do we transition engineered systems to engineered solutions? So, engineered enterprise solutions. So, now, on the flip side, Oracle is basically coming up with the concept of cloud and the cl cloudification of their applications, okay, be it ERP, be it HCM, be it uh, CRM, uh, be it any n number of applications. And now how do we bring that down and basically integrate it into, this, into a stack that is engineered systems as well as engineered ERP solutions and how do I provision that in the cloud 
are basically in a delivery model that is flexible enough for the client. Some, in some cases, depending on uh, the policy considerations, depending on the security considerations, they may want to have uh, some applications, uh, if you will, in-house, some applications on the public cloud, some applications on the vendor cloud. So how do you basically pull these three things together, initiate any kind of provisioning, and how does the systems integrator now react to basically configuring these applications the, the, the concept of systems integration where, where we had to pull all these little elements together, cloud, uh, the, I mean the compute, the storage, and the database, the middleware, the application, now does not exist. Fundamentally goes away. Now we, have, we are more focused on how do I make what is available work for the business. So you're basically saying that, that CSC's value add really is bringing that industry and business process uh, uh, expertise on top of sort of a, a horizontal platform that's that's infrastructure and obviously a applications as well. Is and, that correct? And applications and essentially in addition to that, how do we bring business innovation and basically help our clients be, drive the performance metrics that they so choose to achieve? So I have to ask you. So, so the, for years, there's been a debate about sort of best of breed versus I integrated systems. Best of best of breed being okay. I'm going to integrate bespoke components, whether it's hardware or maybe middleware or maybe software, and, and I'm going to rely on someone like C CSC or maybe even my internal IT department to build that absolute best system. What you're describing is one that's pre-engineered, use an Oracle term, pre-integrated, pre-tested. Can I have both? Can I have best of breed and integrated? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you, you, in a certain, see this is where the innovation cycle kicks in. and. As you basically come up with this set of engineered solutions, as we talk about, now that forms the core of any co company's operations or any, any, any client's operations. And now as innovation kicks in from multiple angles, uh, for example, there's an innovation, the next cycle of innovation in uh, mobility, and uh, if you look at the next cycle of innovation in big data, uh, if you will. and uh, so. So there is always going to be component trees outside of this core stack. Mm -hmm. But as the innovation itself matures, it becomes a part of the core stack as you move forward. So you, people talk about big data and they, it's, 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 it's a big topic everywhere and we talk about information and the information doubling and tripling and whatnot. But I think a lot of the concepts that have been talked about, uh, the, the talk about customer sentiment analysis, or fraud, or risk, or any of these things that uh, we talk about, uh, other than that it is, it is that, that we have disparate data elements now that, that are going into a big data uh, heuristics uh, engine. Uh, I think the next cycle of innovation there is, how do I operationalize it? Yes, there is this big data engine, there's a lot of heuristics coming out, uh, there's a lot of intelligence coming out, but what do I do with it? It's still, it's yes, instead of a spreadsheet, it's still on a computer. Now there's a lot of intelligence behind it, and the decisions are being driven that, based on these things. That's great, but how do I take it? How do I operationalize that intelligence in real time? How do I feed it to the core stack, the engineered solution, which essentially runs the company? How do I do that? So, so there is always going to be that core. And, and if you look at the, uh, the industry per se, uh, the industry is consistently grappling with uh, uh, the cost, uh, the cost of uh, having such a system or the cost of uh, uh, you know, driving such a solution uh, versus the speed uh, to market and, uh, and while de-risking it. Uh, is it possible to get all three things aligned at the same time? And uh, uh, that's an age old question. <laughs> That truly is an age-old question, and is I it? don't think uh, it is an age-old question. No, is it possible uh, to align all three? No, it, it, see, it is possible that the apex of th between the three actually moves in one direction or the other. However, I can tell you that what used to be a significantly high or a long or a, a big pyramid, and now the apex is moving more and more towards the core. 
But is it always, is it possible to basically optimize all three and pull it together any day? I, again, if there's a personal opinion, I don't see it. But however, innovation is going to be the key here in terms of driving this little apex towards any of these three but I like that, that, that mental model. But so, and if I have um, a system that is actually more agile and more flexible and more cost effective, if my business requirements change, I can change more quickly, mm -hmm. presumably. So if I want to, let's say, optimize on agility, uh, and then all of a sudden something happens, some external event mm -hmm. uh, that causes you know, the general counsel to come in and say, wait, we have to de-risk <laughs> the business. Uh, I sh in theory, I should be able to respond more quickly. Is that what you're seeing? Uh, th that, is wh that is what we are seeing. Uh, we should be able to respond more quickly. And uh, like I said, I mean, th there is always going to be this, uh, these, these uh, two dimensions, if you will. Uh, where there's a mature core, and then there's the innovation cycles uh, merging. Uh, talk about your relationship with uh, with Oracle. What's CSC and Oracle, so, the alliance, what it's all, what's it all uh, We've had a relationship with Oracle for about uh, 20 years now, mm -hmm. uh, 20 or more, 20 plus years. And uh, we have a very, very uh, big ecosystem, Oracle ecosystem within uh, within CSC and our client base. And, uh, and in fact, uh, we are a global partner for Oracle and uh, we continue to basically grow our uh, Oracle business, uh, especially with the advent of uh, Oracle engineered systems and, uh, and uh, the, the movement of all the enterprise applications into the cloud, uh, into the cloud from Oracle. Uh, we have had numerous examples. Uh, this does not remain a theory anymore, and we have had numerous examples of an Oracle on Oracle uh, kind of uh, scenario or campaign. And uh, hopefully it is, more, it is going to be more than Oracle on Oracle going forward and uh, uh, we look forward to an Oracle box of sorts and uh, be able to contribute uh, uh, an, an Oracle engineered solution of sorts uh, that uh, hopefully we can contribute to significantly with Oracle. All right, everyone, we have to leave it there. Thanks very much for coming on CUBE Conversations and, uh, and um, we'll be tracking this trend and seeing how it evolves. So appreciate your insights. No, th thank you, Dave. I sure appreciate you having me here and uh, Look forward to uh, tracking those trends as well. All right, thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you next time. This is Dave Thank Vellante. You. This is theCUBE.